Hello everyone, welcome back to Real Talk, a safe place where young adults can discuss different topics from a Christian perspective. Today I am so excited because we are starting a new series on marriage. My name is Daniela and I will be your host. Uh, so my name is Michael, last name Matei. And uh, my name is Tayo Matei. Awesome, thank you so much. All right, so we're going to be talking about marriage. So I would love for you guys to tell us um, how long have you guys been married? How did you guys meet? You know, just the simple things to start. <laughs> okay, so um, we've been married for about five years now. Let's say six, actually. And we met online. So what happened was I got introduced to her by my cousin, and she was in um, Nigeria at the time. So I had to slide into a DM, you know, uh, when I slid into a DM, we started talking from there, things went very well, I went to see her in Nigeria, everything went wow. well, so I went to see her in Ghana first, everything went well, and within that same year as well, I went to see her in Nigeria, you know, everything went well, and from there, I, you know, decided to get engaged to her within that one year span. So that's my perspective. I don't know if she has Yeah, that. I want to hear well, it. Tell us about this. <laughs> uh, yeah, so everything was within uh, nine months. So we met in wow. February. So his cousin, um, she was working in my company. So she introduced us. We, you know, started talking on Instagram. And I don't know, the first day we started talking, we just, you know, we just hit it off. Wow. And so he decided to come over. Um, to Ghana. We decided to meet in Ghana. So we met there and, you know, I guess everything was good. So he came back in, came back to meet my mom. And, um, you know, from there, we started talking about me coming over. We did all of that. And I was um, in the U.S. by December of that same year. Wow. Yeah. So all in all, like nine months, like mm -hmm. I said. I love that. I want to talk about timeline a little bit later because I think a lot of time we hear the, um, you know, assumption that Christians get married really, really quickly. So I want to get to that later. <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, but I would love to, for you guys to um, express to me what does marriage mean to you in your own words? Uh, well, marriage to me is two people coming together. Um, you are getting into a union. And first and foremost, there's God you know, in between the two of you. And um, you come together to rely on each other, depend on each other for, you know, physical needs, emotional needs, and to also, um, to also, I guess, worship together in a certain sense. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, to add to that, um, I believe marriage is like a partnership between two people, you know, because, I mean, not to be all spiritual or anything, but, you know, in the Bible, uh, God said it's not good for man to be alone. And God um, created Eve to help Adam, you know, to help him with the daily activities of taking care of Eden, you know. So marriage in, you know, with regards to uh, our relationship, you know, it's that partnership where she helps me out, I help her out, you know, to both attain, you know, certain goals that we want to attain in life, you know, be it um, family, be it financial prosperity, whatever it is, I can't do it by myself, you know, so I need that help me to help me out in it. You know. I love that you mentioned the concept of help because um, I've been learning about, you know, marriage. I'm single, so <laughs> not experienced like you guys, right? Um, and the importance of marrying someone that is within purpose. So that way you're not always kind of depending on the physical needs and things like that. You're actually focused on something bigger to glorify God. Do you guys think that's important in your relationship? And do you guys have something that is bigger than you guys that you guys work towards together? Um, I'll go first. <laughs> so um, when we got married, I was a Catholic and Mike is, you know, Lutheran. So um, I... I started going to routine. Not like we didn't have any conversation. I just mm -hmm. started going. And I, I would still go to Catholic and to certain like religious um, holidays. But I realized that um, because Mike was a worker and then he was the HOD of the audiovisual department at that time, 
I found out that I was growing in my relationship with God. And I think it's just, I could see how he was striving so hard. Like, he would go to church every, you know, day. If they needed help, he would be the first person to offer. And then, you know, he was just so diligent. And that kind of drove me to be diligent mm. in my work with God. And before I knew it, like, I was in, you know, this um, department and that department. And I was, you know, I was always like, oh, let's go to church. I was always like, yeah, let's go. So mm. I think that, you know, if you are with someone that has the same purpose, which is knowing God more, you know, wanting to be in his presence or, you know, to make sure that you are doing what God wants you to do. Mm-hmm. We're doing it together. Mm-hmm. You rub off each other in a good way, and that's what I think. Yeah, I think she answered it well. Yeah. yeah. So, do you guys ever run into times where um, that is the one thing that is holding you on is like what you know you're supposed to do together to glorify God? Does that ever help you to like you know get over fights or get over hard times in your marriage when you know that you, there's something bigger that you guys are tasked to do? Well, it, it helps, yes, definitely, you know, because, um, I mean, in marriage, you know, you definitely have your ups and downs, you know. But lucky for us, you know, I feel like our marriage was, <laughs> I feel like our marriage was, was, was ordered by God, you know. Like, yeah. to give you a, a quick story about what happened, was yeah. when I was dating, you know, before I met her, um, uh, actually, let me let's start this way. So I had friends, you know, most of them were getting married. I was like the single guy, and it got to a point where I also wanted to get married. So I was dating, and there was always something missing. So I went to God. I was like, God, please bless me with a wife. Bless me with this, 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 you know. And I just so happened to say, God, I promise, if you bless me with this, this will be this, you know, whatever <laughs> the case is, that. you know. <laughs> You know, I mean, it doesn't always work, but for some reason it worked this time. So, um, so long story short, you know, after I told God, like, God, please bless me with this, 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 you know, uh, that was when my cousin introduced me to my wife. And honestly, the, the relationship, as in my opinion, has been smooth sailing. You know, we have our ups and downs. We pray Praise about it. Lord. And yeah. when we were dating, it just so happened that we were, um, what do you call it? We had like prayer points while we were dating, you know, and we're not like spirit coco or anything like that. So it just so happened that naturally we had like prayer points where we're praying about our relationships, about our marriage and everything, you know, while we were dating. So, yeah, I believe, you know, God has helped us out through, you know, um, our relationship from beginning to where we are now. I love that. Thank you for sharing. So um, I want to go back to the timeline thing, right? You guys said you guys basically met and married within nine months, right? So I would love to know, like, how do you know um, when it's the right time to get married? Or is there a time? Is it just when God speaks and then you can just go? Like, is there a way to know or a right time to get married? Um, I think for, well, for me, like, Mike had his list where he, you know, said, God, I promise. That was his story. But for me, like, I, um, when I met Mike, I wasn't um, in a relationship and I wasn't, I don't necessarily want to say I was looking for one, but I just was just not interested. And you know how, like, your um, Nigerian aunties, uncles mm-hmm. are, and she's like, oh, yeah, um, my cousin is so, you know, he's fine, he's this, he's that, and I didn't want to be rude. I was like, uh, okay, <laughs> sure. <laughs> I mean, this guy is, like, 2,000 miles away. I mean, I'm here. I don't really think anything's going to, like, mm-hmm. work. So I just, it was just like, oh. Let me just do it so she gets off my back. That's yeah. how, you know, you know, we started talking. And so when we, you know, we're praying every month, um, every week, I think. We had like 12 weeks that we prayed regularly. And then um, we, we talked about a lot of stuff. We prayed. And then for me, I um, just had a certain peace about it. Like when I knew, like, we were talking about getting married, me coming over, and I prayed, and talk to my mom I was like I just don't feel like my spirit just feels good like I don't have any like nothing is like you know how you just have this feeling like Mm -hmm. there was nothing left and I'll second him like everything was just like bam 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 like getting the green card coming like everything was just like 
no hiccups, nothing. Mm-hmm. Like it was so easy. And so that's why I said, I know like God was telling me at that point, like, you know, this thing can happen. And I just felt that peace. I prayed, felt that peace. I kind of knew it. Mm-hmm. And um, when we got together and he said he had his list, like that. So I think that's how we kind of knew that it was meant to be. What would you say was your confirmation? And I want to hear about this list. <laughs> I mean, it's not like a long list or anything like that, you know. But I mean, you because, like I said, while I was dating, you know, um, there was just always something missing. So when I met my wife, there was there was peace. Honestly, you know, it was one of those. It just felt natural. Everything just flowed. You know, like it literally flowed you know it wasn't forced nothing was forced you know the relationship just it was just mellow you know because like like i said um while i was dating there was always something off you know but with her it was peace you know and my lease wasn't like oh i want her to be 10 foot or i'll be what do you call it i want her to be this uh height or it wasn't anything like that it was just God, please bless me with somebody that, you know, is loving, caring, God-fearing, you know, um, uh, homely, you know, loving, all that stuff, you know, like just the normal stuff, you know, and she pretty much ticked everything on my on my list, you know, and there was just like this piece. So that's when I knew like, yeah, you know, like I said, it just flowed. Mm. It just honestly just flowed. So do you feel like that piece came from the Holy Spirit? Do you think it's necessary for someone to hear from God before they go into marriage? I honestly do not know, you know, because um, in our situation, I prayed. And I personally believe, you know, God led me to meeting my wife, you know. And, um, I mean, prayer goes a long way, you know. And, um, like I said, (laughs) There was always something missing with all the people that I dated in the past. I didn't feel that peace that I felt when I met her, you know, and I personally believe, yes, maybe the Holy Spirit had that way of confirming that, yes, this is your wife, you know, with just that peace, you know, like I said, we met, literally, we met February, like, I have a, like, my WhatsApp, I still have all the history from our conversations when we first started dating, and literally, uh, we started talking, like, let's say February 13th or something like that before Valentine's Day. Wow. By by March, I think I was in Ghana or April. I was in Ghana wow. for Easter. You know, like ambitious. Do okay. <laughs> you know the, the funny thing is I'm not usually like that. You know, it's it's it was I didn't plan it, I didn't force it. It just came naturally. Everything just flowed. You know, like I was in I was in Ghana, we met, my dad was there, she met my dad, you know, she met my mom. You know, I went to Nigeria again, like maybe two months later. You know, uh, I met her family as well. And this weren't like plans that we made. It was yeah, just everything happened. just flowed, you know? Mm-hmm. you know. And like I said, she finally came to the U.S. within nine months of meeting each other, you know, through Instagram. Wow, I love You're that. Cousin. <laughs> cousin and then through Instagram. Yes. Whatever it was, it was, it was beautiful. <laughs> um. So I'd love to know, so during the, I guess, the courting stage, when you guys were talking on Instagram and, like, making plans to meet each other, what are some of the red flags that you look for to make sure that, like, this is the right person? Because you said that there was a lot of things before in your past relationships that it just didn't feel right. So what are some of those things that, you know, our audience can know to look for? Help us out. Well, so, well, my our situation is a bit different from, you know, when you're dating someone that's, like, maybe in the same city or, yeah. like, down the street or whatever. So we were doing long distance, and I will honestly tell you that when we were talking all the time, like, we talked, let's say, maybe 20 hours in a day. Like, we talked a lot. So I had a certain idea of who we, well, I thought I did, right? And so, um, I mean, that's why I packed all my bags. Right. <laughs> it just came after me he- meeting him twice. So when I got here, you know, when we were married and we were, you know, doing this stuff mm-hmm. for real, yeah, there were some stuff, you know, that didn't come out in sure. the talking stage, mm-hmm. you know. So 
And we asked each, I mean, we, all we ever did was talk because we were in a long distance relationship. Right. So we talked, we talked a lot. And I remember like when we were reading like some of the old messages we had, mm-hmm. I was, I, I, I saw one chat where I was trying to be coy and I was like, oh, so what do you like in a girl or something like that, right. you know? <laughs> I was trying to be, I was trying to be smart and everything, but we did ask a lot of questions. And I think like what I said, or whatever my responses were, were good enough for him. And his <laughs> responses were good enough for me. Mm-hmm. There was no, there was no red flag. There was, there nothing, was nothing that had you thinking like, what is going on? No. Nothing like that. Wow. Mm-hmm. And then another thing is like, this is something that, you know, in my past relationship was an issue is when you call your boyfriend and they're like, oh, they don't pick up or they pick up and like, it's all shady, like, oh, wait, let me call you back, or something really, yeah. like, you know, spooky and funky going on. Or, like, you text them, and they don't respond until, like, 10 years later or something like that. So there was nothing like that with him. Like, mm-hmm. if I called him, like, he would even call me, wake me up in the morning, say, hey, because, you know, we had that, like, seven time or, difference. Yeah, we had the yeah. time difference. So he would wake up before me and then text me, like, early in the morning, like, hey, are you up? And... So it was wow. just, they're really, like, he was available mm-hmm. for me, mm-hmm. you know? And then when he came, I was like, oh, let me take this guy serious because he <sighs> came to <laughs> From America. <laughs> exactly. And I'm, like, looking at all these boys in Lagos, and they were not, they were not even doing the same things that he was doing. Right. You know, and he was always interested, like, oh, what are you doing? Send me a picture. What is, what? And he knew all my cousins, all my yeah. nieces, my nephews, like, that's so stuff like that really stood out to me mm-hmm. and that made me sit up and be like oh, you know what let me take this guy serious because mm-hmm. i didn't take it serious <laughs> because i mean he was so far away i didn't think it was gonna right. happen or, you know it's not mm-hmm. you know i didn't that's not how i envisaged my getting married or anything like that uh, <laughs> you know god would surprise you he yeah. would do it <laughs> yeah yeah i mean to add to that you know because like i said everything that i did was just natural there are things that i don't usually do like i made the effort to go meet her in nigeria so if you're dating somebody you have to the person it has to be you have you guys both have to be um giving to each other you know it's not just one person that is giving their all you know like i made the effort paid the money flew to go meet her in nigeria you know so that showed that i was interested Mm -hmm. you know we already laid out our intent from the beginning you know like hey you know, this is not just dating for no reason, you know, like, hey, I, I, I like you, you know, like, I want to marry you kind of thing, you know. So from the beginning, the intent was already there that, okay, we're not just playing games here, you know. And I was serious because I made the effort to go meet her in Nigeria as well, mm-hmm. you know. And, you know, like, sometimes when you're dating, especially if maybe the person that you're dating is not serious, red flags would be like, maybe there's always an excuse, mm-hmm. you know, for some reason, you know, you just, you wouldn't feel the peace because you feel like, oh, maybe they are talking to somebody else. Right. Maybe they are doing, maybe they are messing. I mean, especially this day and age, you never know. You know, you think maybe they are messing with you. Maybe they are the side guy, you know. Mm-hmm. You never know all these things, especially you know. Especially long distance. Exactly. Right. So, you know, like, when you're dating somebody, those are things that you think are red flags. But for us, we didn't have any of those issues. Mm-hmm. You know, I called her. She called me. We could always account for each other's whereabouts, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, like I said, I was putting in the efforts to go there, meet her. She was also putting in the efforts when I came around, you mm-hmm. know. Like, she would buy data on her phone, make sure that I was happy, make sure that I was good. Mm-hmm. And equally, I was making sure that, hey, she was good, everything was taken care of. So, yeah, everything was smooth mm-hmm. sailing. So, to that point, I love how you talked about intent, right? Because I think, especially in the Christian community, I think women want the man to make the first move and, like, feel like he's the one kind of pursuing her. Um, do you think that is necessary? Is that something that we just believe that needs to happen let's let's get real right here <laughs> okay so i'm laughing because when we um started talking i was the first person to say i love you and he always mm-hmm. makes fun I of me that. for that <laughs> but i mean i'm just a very i put my feelings on my Out sleeve there. yeah mm-hmm. so i'm just really upfront and I guess if I really like someone, I'm just like gosh, you know like oh my gosh you know so mm-hmm. <laughs> i said it first and i said it what Two, three, four days after we met. I was, wow. I was, I was, a, I was a boy, man. I was. <laughs> okay, you I, was on, I was on my elements. No, you were, no, you were. <laughs> but it was like maybe after we talked for like less than a week, 
Mm-hmm. I just knew. I just liked him. I was like, you know, I like you. I'm in love with you. you. Yeah. yeah, something like that. Wow. So, um, yeah. So, and I think from there, the intent was this is to marriage. stay. Like, yeah. this is marriage. Mm-hmm. This is not, there's no joking. And, mm-hmm. you know, I'm at, like, take, like, let me give you an, like, if I had said that to a guy, oh, I love you after five days. Some people run away now. And Actually. Yeah, they mm-hmm. will not come back. They will mm-hmm. not, like, buy a flight ticket to come to Nigeria to see. I mean, this is even someone that's maybe down your street. Person's not even going to take your call mm-hmm. anymore. So, mm-hmm. it didn't. he didn't run away because he was serious. His mm-hmm. intent was to get married. So, I think going into any relationship, you have to know your intention first. Mm-hmm. And I think if you know your intention, then you can um, figure out the other person's intention. Because if you're in it for marriage, you can be confident and say, hey, I mean, this is no games to me. I know, like, this is what I want out of this relationship. Mm-hmm. And um, depending on how the person responds or their actions, I guess you can kind of figure out that maybe this person is messing around or not really ready to settle down or something like that. Mm-hmm. So um, intent is very important. Yeah, so I want to share because I have to be honest. So I have this thing where I feel like, Maybe it's just because of my upbringing, people that I grew up around or whatever, my brother, right? Um, when I always feel like whenever a man doesn't like try so hard to be with a woman, then he won't take her seriously, even if they're both really serious in their relationship. He won't feel like, oh, he worked so hard for this, so he might not like value her as much in their relationship. And that might just come from me growing up around broken men, right? But do you think there is any like validity to that statement? Um... I would say that hmm, so there are different types of people. Yeah. Um, people have different kind of um characters, character traits that determine who they are. Um, for Mike, it took me a minute. Well, it took me a while. Let me not say a minute. It took me a while to kind of figure out the kind of person he was. Mm-hmm. So Mike is not a um how do I put it? He's 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 reserved like at home and like if he's outside, he's he talks like he's mm. like very friendly. But when he gets home, he's just like, oh, I just want to do me. I just want to be okay. Um, going with what you said, someone will feel like, oh, he doesn't love me because he doesn't want to. Like he wants to do him. Because he's not know? like actively exactly right. Okay. Yeah. So if I saw it that way, we would have a problem. Mm-hmm. But it took me a. W- I mean, and we did because I thought that when he was like, doing what's that. Up? Yeah, and it was we were always having fights on that because I'm like, well, I wanna like, why are you by yourself? Like, what yeah. are you doing? Like, mm-hmm. let's let's hang around. Like, yeah. let's do stuff together. And he's just like, no, I just wanna do me. I just wanna be by myself. But that's his personality. Mm-hmm. So I had to figure out how to be. And this is something marriage would teach you: is you have to be independent on yes, your own. I love that you said that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you cannot depend on the guy and be like. Oh yeah, I want to eat. So where's my husband? Oh, I want to drink. I, you mine, can't. You mine. can't do yeah. that. You have to be your own person and be his person at the same time. Mm-hmm. So um, when I figured that out, we were fine. Like, mm. I, and then I started to be by myself, and I liked. It. I mean, I I'm a very um, reserved kind of person. Mm-hmm. I'm introverted. Like, I just <laughs> I like reading books. I'm like usually by myself. Mm-hmm. So um, when I realized that that doesn't mean he doesn't love me, that just means he just wants his me time, mm-hmm. then it changed the dynamics of our relationship, and then we we were good. So yeah, I'd love to hear your perspective on this, being a man. <laughs> uh, so the question pretty much was, um, you feel like, <coughs> excuse me, you feel like. The guy has to put in all the effort to show that he loves the woman, pretty much, right? Not that the guy has to put in all the effort, but show interest or, you know, feel like he had to work hard. Because you know how, like, sometimes they say, oh, the, the woman, like, it's easy if she's, like, just too available all the time, especially in the beginning, right? So then the man just feels like he just got in, like, so quickly and there was no issue, right? But then whenever, you know, there has to be some kind of pursuing of her, he feels like he, he had to work hard for this. Is nah. that a misconception? It, it definitely is a misconception, uh, misconception because um, 
Honestly, I, I I just believe if you like something, go for it. You know, if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. You know, I feel if a girl likes a guy, she should go ahead and put her feelings out there. Hey, yo, I like you. So you she's know, sliding the DM. <laughs> Hey, you okay. know, I mean, I personally, I personally don't think it's a problem. You know, if the guy likes you, he likes you. If he doesn't like you, he doesn't like you. Oh. Like, she told me she loved me, like, within one week or two weeks of dating and everything. Mm -hmm. And I personally didn't think of it as an issue. I actually it embraced it. Okay. Yeah, it wasn't all, you know, mm -hmm. it, I embraced it. You know, I was like, oh, she likes me. You know, let's see where this goes. You know, we kept mm -hmm. on talking from that, you know. I don't feel you have to, the guy has to do all this gymnastics and <laughs> jumping and all this other stuff to date. You know, like, if the, I mean, you know, I mean, so the thing is that when you're younger, you're, you're a kid, you're childish, you can do all that childish stuff. But when you get older, hey, you know, be straightforward. You know, what's, what's the deal? What's going on? You know, the girl should be straightforward. The guy should be straightforward. Everybody should be straightforward. You know, right. like, what's going on? Let me just jump in mm -hmm. because of what yeah, he I want said to jump in. <laughs> because i mean we women like the exactly yeah we do you know and i mean because we're in a long distance relationship like it didn't come we didn't have that until we were married mm -hmm. So that's and I why mean, he did gymnastics flying from to Ghana exactly. flying to exactly. Ghana. Like, you know, exactly. So gymnastics. Like, <laughs> exactly. So like, you know, that showed intent that I was yeah. serious, you know. So, I mean, the guy has to show some level of interest, you know, like he has to. I mean, both parties have to show level of interest. Mm -hmm. The lady will have to show her level of interest. The guy will have to show his level of interest. You know, you don't you don't expect the guy to be. You know, dating the babe, hitting on the babe like Auntie Alpha, you know, I'm, is it okay so, to speak how, in English? No, yeah, go yeah. ahead. Yeah, like you're trying to date the babe and the babe is fronting or she's showing off or she's doing shakara. Mm. Like, how about, why? But then you know. would it feel like too much if she had flown to America first to visit you? You see what I'm saying? Wait, say it again. If? Like, if you, before you went to Ghana to visit her for the first time, she's like, no, I'm coming. I'm going to come to visit you to America. Like, would that feel like, nah, she's doing a lot. Like, I need to be the <laughs> one doing that. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I got you. No, no, okay. So wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. I mean, things are okay. So if I was in Nigeria, right, mm. and she flew all the way from uh, America to Nigeria, it's a different scenario, you know, because like it's not easy for me to just go to the U.S., you know. Okay. But yeah. it's easier for her from to come from the U.S. to Nigeria. So that's a good gesture, you know, like oh, okay. But while she's in Nigeria, I'll play my own game because at the end of the day. The guy has to, he has to woo her, you know. The guy has to impress That's her. That's my point. You know, yeah, you have to impress her, no doubt. But, you know, the lady doesn't have to be doing all this shakara while yeah. he's trying to impress her. I you know, like, the intent should be there. It should be clear-cut, like, okay, she flew all the way to Nigeria. Now I got to do, I have to put my game up. I have to, I have oh. to step up my game. I have to impress this babe, you know. Mm -hmm. So you do your own your own thing, you woo her. I mean, <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, she was telling me she loved me by the first week. I mean, your boy was, <laughs> was doing things, you know. I, I was spitting game on things, you know. So, oh yeah. Oh, my gosh. I mean, let me say something, uh -huh. though, is um, if the two of you are not on the same page, it's not going to work. Mm -hmm. That's why you have issues like that. Because, like, if the girl is not fronting mm -hmm. and the guy is, you know, wooing her, then, I mean, if, if there's no other issues, it should go well. well mm -hmm. You know, if the two parties are 100% invested in, I want to date this person to marry this person. Mm -hmm. So it's when one person is still, you know, one leg in, one leg out, that's when you start to have issues like that. Mm -hmm. You know, you start to have problems come up and stuff like that. Because I don't know, like, I think I'll only front for a guy if I don't like the guy. Mm -hmm. Let me be honest. Yeah. I don't like him. I'll be like, he stop talking to me. Like, mm -hmm. duh. Like, if he calls me, like, this guy again. Like, I will do yes. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So, I'll be honest. If I don't like you and you're calling me, I'll front for you. Mm -hmm. Before she like got married, that is. <laughs> Period. Yes, Mike. We know before I got married. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. And then the guy, too, if she's not priority mm -hmm. one for him, He's not going to put all his effort into wooing her. Mm -hmm. And he's not going to do all those gestures. Right. Yeah, exactly. I so. think both parties have to prioritize themselves. You know, like, they both have to show that level of interest and commitment to each other. You know, mm -hmm. if, if, if it's missing on one... I mean, so the thing is, if it's missing on one side, like, let's say the lady is not sure 
you know, and maybe she's fronting and, you know, the guys, you know, the guys spitting all this game, doing all these gestures, you know, he's trying his best to woo her. I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I feel like he can try his best, but if it's not reciprocated on the lady's wow. side, yeah. yeah, and and he's trying his very best, you know, he could just give it a rest, you know. He shouldn't Wait keep pushing yeah. it. Yeah, he shouldn't yeah. keep pushing it, you know, because... Yeah, because I, I just personally feel like it should be mutual. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing. That was really good. Um, I think something that I've noticed about you guys' relationship is that you keep saying that everything was just flowing. Everything's pretty easy, even in your five years of marriage, right? So it made me think of the miscom session that marriage is so hard. People always say that. And I'm like, I don't want marriage if it's hard. <laughs> okay. <Aww. laughs> so I want to talk about that. Do you guys feel like marriage, like the idea of marriage being hard is a miscom session? Or is it just that two people have to be willing to you know, work hard to make it work. Does it have to be hard? I don't like when people say marriage is hard. Mm -hmm. I'll say, wait, hold on. Challenging, yeah. is challenging the same thing as hard? Marriage is, but for me, marriage is hard. I mean, it's challenging. Mm -hmm. let, me, let me put it that way. I wouldn't say hard. It puts a blockage. When, it, like, when you hear marriage is hard, it's like, I don't want that. Like, I, don't, yeah, I don't like I, hard things, you know? I like easy life. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, I, I don't like that word hard. I mean, yeah. marriage is challenging, no doubt, mm -hmm. you know? Like, I mean, Using our life as an experience, when she first came to the U.S., you know, most of my friends were her friends, you know, most of, um, pretty much, uh, I was the one that showed her the ropes, you know, taught her how to drive a car, all that other stuff. But while, when she first came, you know, that we were learning each other. You know, they tell you about the five love languages. Her love language was physical touch and... It was just physical, physical touch. touch. Period. Me too, you girl. Know? Yeah. <laughs> and, but and it's I changed mean, now. Like, oh, okay. Because he wasn't giving me no physical touch. I mean, so I, wait, hold on. Let's, let's get into it. Wait, hold let's on, get hold into on. it. <laughs> like I said, her love language was physical touch. Mm -hmm. My love language, I believe, was act, act of service. service. But physical touch for her is not just, you know, uh, holding hands here today. It's like... I want the hug, I want the cuddle, I mean, hold my I hands relate. in public, all this other stuff. <laughs> That's the problem. <laughs> you know, and I didn't grow up that way. Yeah, you know, yeah, like, yeah. it's not something that I'm used to. I'm a very, very African man, but I'm trying to modernize myself. Mm -hmm. You know, but all that holding hands yeah. in public, I like it. But mm -hmm. it's, it's not as, I like it, no it doubt. It comes second hand to you. Yeah, you yeah. know, it's, I love it, but it's not easy for me to just be holding hands in public. Mm -hmm. I mean, I want to do it, no doubt, you know. For me to be always cuddling. Sometimes I just want my space, you know, yeah, all that, yeah, yeah. all that physical touch for me, sometimes it's too much, but I try my best to, I try my best to, to entertain it, you know, but yes. it's, it's not as easy as I thought it would be, you know, mm -hmm. and act of service. I mean, she does a great job, you know, I'm not even going to lie on that part. Mm -hmm. She does a great job, but I'm the kind of person that, you know, I'll just do my thing myself if, you know, I see something is missing, but she does a great job at that as well, mm -hmm. you know, so, Marriage, I wouldn't say is hard. It's just you got to learn each other's love languages. You got to learn mm -hmm. each other because, like, we're totally two different people, two different backgrounds, mm -hmm. two different upbringings, you know. So merging all that into one pot, you know, you can, you can tell it. Even siblings have, you know, their own yeah. issues, you know. So you can imagine two different people, you know, yeah. coming from different places. We will definitely have our own issues that we have to iron out. That's my own personal opinion, though. Mm -hmm. Well, just to say my love language has changed from physical touch to quality time mm -hmm. now because <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> um so uh marriage is let me use his words challenging because when we first when I came um I realized like you know he had that attitude of I want to have me time I want to do me and mm -hmm. stuff like that I mean I can't see that over the phone so that's mm -hmm. something I found out when I came mm -hmm. and then um you know, there was some other stuff that, you know, was going on. So, yeah, um, a certain, like, certain misconception is, like, ooh, breakfast in bed, open the <laughs> car door. Um, ah, even the car door? Ah, this. Ah. Don't start something, you can't finish. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. No, no, no. No, no, no it's fine. I don't even, like, I don't even, like, I don't even care. That's, like. It's I mean, not important to you. Yeah. So, and that was another thing I had to learn was I had to pick my battles. Like yeah. there was stuff like I would be like, no, like you have to I'm do this. Yep. Yes. And I, I said, look, I mean, you can do you all you want, but this is something that you have to show up for me. Mm -hmm. This is what I need mm -hmm. to know that you love me. Mm -hmm. 
you know so yes there were you know stuff like what i just mentioned and um you know like the um love languages thing like he doesn't like to hold hands mm-hmm. and stuff like that i mean i'm a very expressive person mm-hmm. so it took me a while because that was also a challenge for me i had to figure out how to do myself mm-hmm. <laughs> like how to not feel like he didn't love me if yeah. he didn't do that I mean, so the other things that I do, yeah. but the thing is, you know, I mean, I do make time, you know, because He's like, I mean, no, 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 I'm not <laughs> no, no, not okay, so, no, no, okay, so maybe <laughs> she wants to be, she wants to be watching her Asian, Korean, oh, you like Indian Korean type of films, you know, I, I don't want to watch that all the time, especially mm. if it's like 70 episodes, Jesus Christ, like I can only but watch one we, or two, we you know, make time to yeah, watch exactly. So, stuff. no, 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 this is talking about when we first got married, no, no, now we're very... Like, now we're it set. Works. Yeah, we're good. I mean, the first year, Axe Mike was very challenging. We yeah. fought a lot. Mm-hmm. Like, fight, we fought a lot. But I not think physical fight, though. No, 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 no. I mean, just arguing and, yeah, just arguing and, yeah, just arguing and keeping my list in the house and mm-hmm. all that kind of stuff. I mean, but that's just because, this is not even, like, because we're in a long-distance relationship. The first year is really hard. Because you're, you're living with somebody that you, you mm-hmm. don't know. And... He's different. I'm different. We have different personalities. Mm-hmm. And the way I perceive things is different from the way he does. So he will do something that will hurt me. And I will stew and not tell him. And I'll be mad. And he's just like, what's wrong with this one? And he just goes away. <laughs> so fast forward to five years later. Now, if something happens, like he probably, maybe I'll tell him. Or maybe I won't tell him. Now he will buy me flowers. And just bring it home and be like, hey. Which he <laughs> never that did that. Mm-hmm. Yes, he never did that when we first got married. Mm. So he it took... Now. Uh, <laughs> yeah, continue, continue, <laughs> continue, continue. So it took us, you know, understanding each other more and just realizing that, you know, we, we really like each other and we want this to work. Mm-hmm. So we had to figure out a way to, you know, get comfortable with, with each other. So now if we have fights, like I say, he'll buy me roses or he'll just do something or it's easier now. Mm-hmm. Like now if we have a fight, uh, maybe if we're being stubborn, maybe two days where we finish. In fact, maybe the same day, he'll just be like, hey, I don't want to fight. And I'll be like, okay, fine, I don't want to fight. And then the fight is over. Yeah. But before, when we got married, oh, man, like seven days, like I'll cry. I wanted to go back home. I was sad. I was like, what is this? Is this was this, this all this? Like it was it was really tough. I mean, my perspective is a bit harsh because you moved? I, yeah, away. I moved. Yeah. I didn't have any family. Like he literally was my lifeline. So yeah. if he did anything that hurt me, especially me that I'm hundred percent like expressive, like I'm very mm-hmm. emotional and stuff like that. Like I'll just think like it's the end of the world and I'll just start crying and I'm like, <laughs> oh my God. What is this? Blah blah blah. But after a while, I I became better mm-hmm. at myself, mm-hmm. with myself. I grew myself to the point where I started to be like, he, he did this. Fine, that's fine. I'll tell him and I'll move on. Mm-hmm. I didn't wallow. I didn't put myself down and be all depressed wow, and all important. that. Yeah. yeah, I did that. And when I did it, like I, it was better. Like mm-hmm. he he does stuff, and I just I just tell him and I'm like whatever, and I just. Ignoring so you have so. to pick your battles when you're married. You, have you have to pick, pick your battles, battles yeah. you know. And the thing is, so like for her, I know I don't want to keep talking about this topic, but for her, like <laughs> when, when, so when we first uh, started dating, whenever she is sad, you know, um, she will leave. We used to live in an apartment, and we were in Maryland at that time. She'll leave the apartment and just disappear, you know. Like she'll go to the library, or I don't even know where she'll go to. You know, she just go somewhere. My mind just start wondering, like, oh, my God, is she safe? Is she okay? What's going on? Where is she? Blah, blah, blah. You know, so, you know, I'll be troubled, and I'll look for her. I'll see that she's all emotional. I'll try and calm her down and everything. And, you know, she'll explain, and we end the fight. But it got to a point where I was like, what is all this? You know, every time. So it got to a point where I was like, you know what? If you are sad, you heal yourself. 
time time will pass you'll be better you know so gradually mean. you know that's mean. You know, mean i mean it's not like yeah, i was trying to so be real. mean he was mean it, 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 i wasn't trying to be mean but i was like <laughs> time will heal yourself you know like bye bye give her give her so you know you know give her some time Let, yeah, i mean i'm know. a i'm a very i don't know i'm a very i'm a very um chill person like mm-hmm. i feel like time heals all wounds you know so whenever she's in that state i'll just give her time like let her heal wow. herself whereas she doesn't want time she wants me to be there. I mean, you know, like, so like maybe else? after two, three days, I see like, oh, come on, this thing is not getting resolved though. Like, you know, you what then, <laughs> then I step in, you know, then I, then I have to wow. buy flowers. I, have to, I mean, because, you know, you don't want to, you don't want to keep malice that long, you know. So it got to a point where we are now where I'm like, you know, depending on what it is, if it's like something that, you know, maybe she did wrong, I put my foot down, I'm like, well, this thing, let's, <laughs> let's more fight the go, you know. But you know, ah, even at that, that even at that though, even at that, it still depends because like I don't like we don't like that sort of like negative energy in the house. Yes. So when the energy is very very negative and it's very dark, then I just try to calm things down. And she's a very very loving person. She's very easy. She doesn't give me wahala. You know. So things just they just die down easily. You know, like if I apologize, fight has finished. Mm-hmm. You know. So that, that was another thing. Mike did not like to apologize. Mm. On he, if, he if really, I was right, especially like if you feel no, if you feel or if you felt like you were right, Ooh, doesn't that necessarily different. mean you were right. Mm. Exactly. So he didn't like to apologize mm-hmm. when he first got married, and that was a big thing for me. Like mm-hmm. I would get so mad. I'd be like, "You did something, blah blah blah. Why don't you want to apologize? Like, why don't you feel like you should say sorry?" Right. And then after that, then we fought on the type of sorry because we just be like, "Sorry." I'm like. Who are you telling sorry to? That's not how you say genuine. sorry. Yeah, exactly. You well, have to say well, with I've feeling. Well, grown now. Her, she's strong now. She can handle it. Me too. It's <laughs> because... not... <laughs> this is real. <laughs> no, it's not like she's strong now. It's just that now we don't fight over like yeah, the petty. Yeah, I mean we've we've uh, we we've, we've been married for a while now, so we don't fight over like if we fight over anything, it's something ah uh, something very random. Nothing like mm-hmm. nothing. Earth shattering, nothing crazy. Okay. Yeah. This it's was so bad. good. Thank you so much for sharing. I want to, I know we're running out of time, but I really want to end um, this conversation with a little cliffhanger because I have this thing, okay? So people say, especially in the African community, we say that whenever some people get married, the woman goes to the, the man's house. Basically, like, she's the one who's, like, engulfed in the culture and not the opposite way around. Do you guys think that, really quick, if that is a Christian thing, like that's something that's supposed to be done according to the word of God, or is that just something that is an African thing? I do not know, mm-hmm. but in our own situation or in our own family, you know, my family is very big, very big, you know. And, you know, she tries to call my mom because I have like three moms, you know, <laughs> mom, I have, you know, the Nigerian Yoruba culture. You know, I don't. so I oh, I'm yeah. sorry, okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, but like you know, everybody in like everybody's your mom, your aunts are your mom. So oh, yeah, like, I have a lot of moms, yeah. mm-hmm. and she tries to keep in touch with all of them. You know, and um, I try to. I mean, she she Is does a good job in both ways. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So oh, yeah. you know, um, I keep in touch with her family. She keeps in touch with my family. You know, the family embraced her as much as they could. You know, I try to help when I can. You know, to make the family embrace certain That's things good. about her as well. You know, okay. so yeah. I mean, I think family is very important because yeah. these are the people that you've been with before you met this person. So the way your spouse or your, you know, really um, boyfriend or whatever treats your family matters a lot. Mm-hmm. You know, so um, I think I don't really think it's an African thing. I just mm-hmm. think it's a human. It's a yeah, I think it's human for you to want to um go over to I don't know your in laws house or your mm-hmm. your I mean they're your family now once you're married so your family's house and just love on them just, and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So. And I think for me maybe because the way I grew up I always saw my dad's part of the family way more than I even know my mom's part of this family mm-hmm. and like with a lot of other uncles and aunts it's like that it's just like the the man's like family is the one who carries more weight. Right, mm-hmm. so I didn't know if that was like an African thing, I, I not, and I've also seen like in different counseling as well. Like they just say like, "Oh, you need to know his family more." It's like you're coming into the family, but it's like for me, it's like where is it in the I, Bible? I think it goes both ways. Mm-hmm. I think because like he even surprises me. Like, like I'll just be doing stuff, and my mom will come and be like, "Oh yeah, Mike called me, 
And Baba, I'm like, oh, he called you? And she's in Nigeria. So, like, even me, I'm like, I haven't even called you. And he's calling you. So, he Mm -hmm. does that. And it, yeah, exactly, surprises me. And I'm like, oh, okay, that's nice. So, I think it's both, it has to be both ways because, Mm -hmm. I mean, that's another way to show that you actually care about the person Mm -hmm. by caring about the people they care about. Mm -hmm. So, it's very. Well, thank you guys so much for being real with us and joining us today. We had so much fun. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. Let us know in the comments, what do you think? Is it important for both the husband and the wife to be very involved in each other's family? Let us know in the comments, and we will start that conversation on in our next episode in this series. Thank you guys again for joining us, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Thank you. Bye.